Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Bob Ravenscroft. I'm the Vice President for Advancement. And first of all, I would just like to thank you for being here. The role of the media and putting out reliable and credible information could never be more important. And by virtue of that, you have become a part of our extended care team for the community. So thank you. Uh, we'll have a series of people come up. Um, we, over here we have Lisa Vale. She'll speak first. She's our chief nursing officer. And she will address the uh, modifications to the visitor guidelines, uh, different community collaborations that are occurring, and our hotline that is being stood up. We have Dr. Brian Bossert, who is the president of Brian Telemedicine and with Inpatient Physician Assistance Associates, that's uh, our hospitalist group here. He will talk about the Brian Easy Visit virtual care questionnaire that will uh, route care. And then John Woodrich, uh, the president of Brian Medical Center and the executive vice president for uh, Brian Health, will uh, round up the day with a discussion about our drive through clinic plans. And then another new um, plan that emerged for, for getting respiratory um, x-rays and so forth triaged appropriately in the community. So that's new from the press release. John will address that. Um, at the conclusion of their remarks, we'll open it up to questions. And we also have with us uh, Dr. John Trapp, uh, a pulmonologist and our vice president of medical affairs, Dr. Alyssa Clough, who is the president of inpatient uh, physician Associates, our hospitalist program internally, and then we have Larry Kresbach, our epidemiologist from Infection Control. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Lisa for her remarks. I would like to share with you as part of our strategies to keep individuals safe, family members or visitors are discouraged from coming to Bryan Medical Center locations with individuals who arrive to be screened for the COVID-19 virus. This is for the health and safety of all individuals, and it's also recommended by the Centers for Disease Control. This action reduces the risk of transmission of the virus as it is thought to spread mainly between people who are in close contact with each other. If family members or visitors do accompany a patient who is receiving COVID-19 testing at the hospital, they will be restricted from personal contact with that individual until those test results are known. That could take up to 24 to 48 hours. We will collaborate with family members and patients to find alternatives for them to stay connected because we understand how important that is for families to be connected when one is in the hospital. One of the other things I wanted to share with you is about some new community collaboration that we have begun. Um, Brian Health and CHI St. Elizabeth have begun holding joint comp telephone conference calls with key leaders from each of our incident command uh, groups to address issues related to the COVID-19 pandemic. The twice weekly discussions allow both healthcare facilities to provide consistent response and alignment on best practices to provide appropriate care for all of the people of our region. We are also coordinating activities like visitor screening with other hospitals such as Madonna and Lincoln Surgical Hospital. And the last thing I would like to share with you is the uh, introduction of a new nurse COVID-19 hotline. This began this morning. Brian Health has dedicated um, this uh, resource available for our community. A nurse will answer medical questions about COVID-19 coronavirus 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To access this individual, we'd like to ask that you call 402-481-0500 as needed. Thank you. Just wanted to take uh, a moment to make uh, everyone aware of care that's available from the comfort of your home. Brian Health Easy Visit, which can be accessed easily through uh, web brianhealtheasyvisit.com or can be accessed through apps on your iPhone or Android, can be used as a safe, effective, and convenient tool for gaining information, access to, as, uh, to a screening tool for COVID-19 and other information uh, that's important uh, to the care of you and your families. You can access that information literally within seconds of uh, reaching out to that site. Additional care is offered at no cost for patients with upper respiratory infection symptoms when you use the promotion code COVID-19, C-O-V-I-D, one nine. 
So we wanted to make sure you know of the uh, uh, availability of those resources. Thank you. I just wanted to do a follow-up from uh, the comments that Dr. Boster just made. We think that these easy visits is a great way for uh, patients or potential individuals to make uh, contact uh, with the medical provider, and we encourage people to do that. We do understand that some people still have a comfort level of seeing a physician. Now, you can imagine uh, right now there's probably a lot of people trying to get into their physician's offices. If they can't, we want to create an alternative so they don't show up to the emergency room. So we will be standing up here shortly, and you can go to our website when we have it up and running, and it will be soon. We will have a separate entrance at our LifePoint facility for any people with that re upper respiratory to come in and see a physician or a provider and be taken care of at that time. But we really do encourage them to use that easy visit. Another alternative that we're going to be standing up here at that same LifePoint facility is the drive-up capability. But what we ask for people to do is when they utilize that easy visit, and let's say they get screened to the point where they say they do need to have the testing done, that will be an alternative where to have that test administered. It will not be administered by people just arriving there. It has to be uh, done by a physician order to say that we can go ahead and administer that test. The reason we're waiting to stand that up is because we're trying to get additional test kits. We have a limited supply in the state, and as we continue to receive those, we want to make sure we're very prudent and that we use those accordingly as we prepare for if this um, outbreak continues to grow. So with that, I, I just want to say I'm extremely proud of this team. Uh, Brian looks to continue to service the people in this region and take care of their health. And what I'd like to do is open it up for questions. And as questions occur, we'll ask the appropriate individual to come and address that question. We think that we could uh, receive as many as 50 a month right now. And one of our alternatives is we're looking to see if we can do something internally as well to support that. Uh, that's why currently when people come, we want to screen them because you have su such a limited su supply of these tests. You want to assure that they reach or meet that criteria before that test is administered. Um, and that's one of the things that you will hear across the state. Until we get additional supply, um, we have to screen people before we'll administer that test. Availability of testing uh, does uh, hinder a little bit on our evaluation of patients coming in if they uh, are uh, meeting some criteria for COVID testing. So we're working on uh, developing algorithms to identify the most at-risk folks that we can identify and test and make sure that those are screened appropriately. One of the things we are still doing is uh, sending uh, test kits to Nebraska Public Health Lab. They've been very cooperative and working very collaborative with us to get appropriate folks tested. So we have not had an issue with individuals that need testing to come in and, and uh, have that assessed and the testing being administered. We, of course, believe that the incidence is going to increase in the community and there may be additional uh, volumes that we expect to see, so we would like to see the availability of more test kits. But we are working internally at Bryan to establish a process where we can run that test internally without having to send it to an external lab, um, which will help with that as well. Um, from a inventory and PPE and other supplies, we have adequate supplies of what we need to take care of these patients. So um, we believe we're in pretty good shape for the current uh, day today, but looking at what we think might be happening compared to what's happened in other parts of the country, um, we would like to see definitely the availability of more supplies, particularly test kits. Not so much that we would have to send more than one sample, but it would rapidly uh, allow us to turn around the results much sooner. And so then we can perhaps decrease our use of personal protective equipment when patients don't test positive. So right now, uh, running tests to the lab, uh, the state lab in Omaha, we're 24 to 
48, 48 hours for those results. If we could do it internally, we could shorten that uh, to less than a day. And so it would help us care for those patients throughout the organization. So a little bit of sparing of uh, PPE or the personal protective equipment. So. With regards to traffic, my acute care providers are taking and fielding calls from the communities with regards to referring patients here that might be high risk for testing. We have not changed any of our protocols with accepting those patients here. Um, currently, I think we have um, several that are in the hospital that have currently undergone COVID testing. But um, at this time, like she said, we're following the CDC guidelines and um, advice from the state on who to test. So the drive-through is what we're thinking about is you don't want an individual who could be potentially positive to get exposure to other individuals. So what they will do is have the availability to pull under a covered area and we would be able to administer the test right there so they can be within their, their vehicle. You know, we have a command center set up to, uh, to deal with what could occur. Uh, we also have done inventory of supplies and ventilators and uh, the training of staff and the skill sets. And, you know, we have always run drills on emergency preparedness from a variety of aspects. Um, we're, we're prepared for this. And uh, it, it is something that, you know, we haven't seen in this country in quite some time. But I think all of the practice and the drills that we've gone through and the talent that we have in the room, uh, people are trying to assure folks that, you know, you have to take this in a calm fashion and you have to go ahead and say, let's do the testing appropriately or the screening because you could just be utilizing a bunch of kits that may make people feel better. But in reality, we're looking at the entire region we're trying to take care of. So we have to be prudent in, in how we do this. And if people meet the criteria, we'll be able to do the testing. And so far, we haven't had a shortage of doing that if they meet the criteria. And, you know, the clinical presentation of this disorder looks just like other viral syndromes. It may be low-grade fever, muscle aches, cough, congestion, maybe even shortness of breath. Right now, the current CDC guidelines are absolutely that. Look for other causes. The incidence of having two disorders like influenza A or B and this COVID-19, extremely low. So the initial recommendation by CDC and the state of Nebraska, test if you find a reasonable explanation otherwise, they will not probably get the COVID-19 test. Now, that's a really difficult question. You know, that gets into the epidemiology for these pandemics. Uh, you've seen what's happened in China. You've seen what's happened in Italy. There's an expectation that we're going to continue to see increased numbers throughout the country. Uh, this is a difficult diagnosis because 80% of the patients, 80-85% of the patients have only mild symptoms. So they're walking around the community thinking that they're fairly well. And they may cough and they may expose other individuals. And what we do know is that the patients who are highest risk, those over the age of 60, particularly those over the age of 80, have a much higher risk for developing severe disease, uh, requiring hospitalization, intensive care services, respiratory failure. So we're anticipating that we're going to see increases over time, just like those other countries have had. Well, we, we are in communication with a number of different healthcare facilities. You know, these are the physician private offices, St. Elizabeth's, Madonna. Certainly we need to be talking to the nursing homes. I know we have a command center that's in connection with them as well. Uh, we need to work together as a community. Uh, I don't think we can just isolate ourselves and say that we won't take care of patients or close the doors to incoming patients. The hospital already is 90% uh, occupied, so we need to continue to, to uh, allow patients to be discharged appropriately, just as we have in the past. So we are not only taking care of patients with acute viral syndromes and COVID-19, we're taking care of all those other patients with uh, other types of pneumonia, respiratory failure, other illnesses, heart attacks. Brian's still functioning normally, just as we, as we would for other community illnesses, routine surgeries, uh, fractures, etc. And this is on top of that. What helps us dramatically? Um, 
Think of it this way. If you truly have an exposure and you're high risk for this new virus, COVID-19, how do I approach it? You're highly infectious. The last thing I want to do is expose key health personnel, physicians, uh, office staff, nurses to that individual. Because if you expand that and you, you infect me, then I potentially can infect many other people. So in order to test you, typically right now, we're doing uh, protective devices, hoods, uh, special masks, uh, body containment devices, if you will, in order to just simply test you. So if you come to my office, most offices, in fact, almost all independent physician offices don't have any of that testing equipment or that special uh, protective equipment to test you. So by doing it in a uh, controlled area, we can have certain individuals who are don this equipment can do that testing for you individually if you're high risk, test you and get that result back to you. Um, you know, the, most of this protective equipment is, is, is something that's limited resource. Again, limited resources as far as what we have to test people. Uh, it's contained. We have plenty of supplies within the hospital. But again, we're anticipating that this is going to go on for weeks or longer. I don't know that we really know. So we're also being thoughtful about how we use that equipment. We certainly don't want to go through uh, our personal protective equipment rapidly because we're going to need that down the road as well. So we have to be thoughtful about how we use our resources. Uh, throughout this whole event. If you remember a number of years back, we went to all private rooms in the organization. So you think about something like this, how much more comforting that is to an individual to have their own private room than to be in a semi-private room uh, with another person. But, you know, all of this goes into the planning when we do facilities. We're always trying to stay up on the latest and greatest, putting in those negative pressure rooms, just keeping up with what we've been exposed to as a community. So I believe that all of those efforts have been taken uh, into account as we continue to, to grow and, and service the area. You know, I just want to say you guys are going to be so key to getting communication out to the public. Um, we want people to have true information and a source of truth, and that's what we're trying to do. All of these physician practices you talk about, we, I think we have over 160 different ones in Lincoln. We communicate with them all the time. We're communicating with over 5,000 staff members here. Um, we're doing everything possible to allow our people to get good information and not to go off of the rumor mill. So we will continue to do these types of things. As expressed earlier, this information is changing by the day and we just want to make sure that we get proper information out to folks. I would again just like to thank all of you. Um, you play such an important role. As I said at the beginning, you've become an extension of our care team. So as you're compiling your information, if there's anything you're unclear of, please contact Brad or Edgar so we can get clarification because as John said, as I've said, Reliable and credible information is the most important thing we can do right now and you guys play a crucial role and we thank you for all you do for our community.